Hello everyone, welcome to another Incarnate Livestream. Today we're going to be creating the Fey and Evil biomes for our fantasy world maps. So we're going to make that with the fantasy world style. Go ahead and check the chat. I've go ahead and provided the link if you want to follow along in today's stream. Now before I jump into uh, the stream, I got some real quick announcements. If you over go over to the updates at incarnate.com, you're going to notice that we've released some new art, starting with the jungle pack. This is an absolutely gorgeous pack. I think the artists really outdid themselves. You can see that there are some new stamps here. Absolutely beautiful. Love the color. Vibrant, beautiful. One of my favorite packs up to date. We all to date. We also have some new textures as well that comes with that pack, like all the packs that we create, and some absolutely gorgeous maps created by our art team. Absolutely beautiful. Absolutely love these two maps. They're fabulous. I also want to include a the Valentine's Day special. We just released these as well. Now that's going to be little mini packs that are associated with each style. So you've got the art for fantasy battle maps, cities. Watercolors, Battle Maps, Regional HD, Fantasy World Parchment, the whole work. So definitely go check those out, play around with those. And I also want to mention that we are going to be doing a special jungle stream on Friday of this week, 3 p.m. PST. We're going to make some cool jungle stuff. It's going to be chill. It's going to be fun. We're going to check out the beautiful pack, play with it, make some fun stuff, maybe a temple. Who knows, right? We'll check it out. So hopefully you've cloned and edited or cloned this map and you're going to follow along with it. Now, the first thing that I generally do when I make a biome is I got to stake out some prime real estate. Where am I going to put this biome? And for this stream, I'm going with two isolated, two islands. One's going to be Fey, one is going to be evil. And they're kind of antithetical to each other. I'm going to have them be kind of the source of good and the source of evil. Obviously, the Fey being the source of good and the evil being the source of evil. So we'll be throwing that in. Now, I'm going to choose this island right here, which is I think is kind of nice. I like the overall position of it. It's got a nice shape to it. And before I stop plopping down stamps, I kind of think I want to do a little bit of terraforming to this island to make it look a little bit more interesting. How do I take it a level up, right? And what I'm thinking is, is that I might have some land that kind of creates like root systems that kind of connect into the surrounding land. So I'll go to that mask tool. I'm going to choose the add mode and I'm going to choose pretty much the smallest brush. I'm going to do a circle brush. And I'm going to bring the size down all the way to one. And with that, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of create some little tiny kind of like veins or roots that are going to kind of come off of the island and then kind of connect to the other pieces of land. And I'm going to turn off also my... Um, mask effects. What happens with the mask effects is they sometimes can cause a little bit of lag, especially if you're in a higher editing resolution. So turn off the mask effects until you're done adding mask, add or subtract. So let's go ahead and connect these like this. And so again, what I, it, the goal is here that I want to pretend that these are maybe roots from a large world tree, Yggdrasil, Drizel. And, I, you know, it's kind of what I associate with Fae. Fae is generally like a fairy realm. It's kind of like a mystical uh, place that's kind of associated with nature. And so I'm going to think about those themes when I start applying stamps to it. But again, first, I'm going to kind of create these squiggly little land, or you could call them roots. And we'll go further into detail with that. Let's just kind of get it, the overall setup first, maybe connect a couple of these. There we go. There you are. So now we kind of have the landscape kind of matching a little bit with the kind of theme of the island, which is Fey. And then what I like to do next, after I've done my little terraforming there, I'll pick an overall color or texture that I want to put down in that space. Now, for starters, I'm not going to do any advanced techniques. I'm not going to use the advanced settings, transform, the color adjustment. We're going to save that for the second part of the stream. So for the first half, I'll just right out of the box, put down stamps without doing any adjustments to them. And then we'll bump it up a level. And anyone who is familiar with our stream streams, I cannot just go one way. I have to go overboard. I have to take it to the next level. It's just the way that I am. It's the way that I'm wired. And I'm going to be doing that here in this stream. So I'm going to apply this kind of purplish color. When I think of Faye, I think of bright 
colors, purples, could be oranges, yellows, reds, blues, vibrant greens. All of those colors are what I associate with Faye. And for right now, you don't have to worry about doing any advanced texturing or anything like that. Just lightly go over the areas that you want to represent that biome and then just stop there. And then we'll start applying some stamps. When I start applying down stamps, I usually start with the terrain first, right? You never start with maybe a building first. You build the terrain and then you build stuff on top of that terrain. So what I'll do is I'll probably take some cliffs. It really depends on what I'm trying to create here. I could create a center part of the island, maybe do a little bit more terraforming actually. Just go to the subtract and let's just make the center of it kind of make, make the island maybe kind of a ring. And I'm going to use this edgy brush as well to do that. Oop, you know, those are too big. I have to bring down the size. We have this awesome option where you can bring down how many edges there is. Let's go with three. There we go. And now I can go in and kind of create maybe like a donut. It's the Fay donut. Who doesn't like Fay donuts? I do, right? So we'll kind of create a little, little uh, open thing there. And that will be maybe a good location for maybe our world tree or some magical portal. It could be anything, right? Maybe it's a creature, who knows? Now that I've done that, I can throw down my landscape. Now I'm not probably not gonna throw down any kind of crazy ridges or anything in this one. Instead, I'll probably just put down the center piece of it, or I can throw down some mountains. Actually, let's do that, let's have some fun. Let's throw down some mountains, and I totally recommend that you use the clipping masks one. So right here, you'll see terrain clipping masks. Go ahead and select those. And I'm not going to be using, um, I'm going to be using this one. They are kind of green, but it should show some of the purple. I'm going to put a ring all the way around it. So to kind of create some nice landscape here. And then when we get to the more advanced part, we'll probably change a little bit of the color adjustment to make these match a little bit more. Now that I've got my terrain, I can go on the next step, which is creating like the center piece. That's going to be the piece that sticks out the most, right? I'm going to use a world tree. Like I said, I'm going to scale it up because I want the tree to be big, really, really big to make it look like, hey, this is a very large tree. Let's go ahead and push it up a level. I'm not going to do any transforming. I'm not going to play with the hot bars or anything like that. We'll get to that later. And now that I've got that together, I can take the add mode of the mask tool, take a circle brush, and again, I'm just going to connect the roots of the tree into the land itself as well. Just take it right off of the roots, make them connect. So that way there's some continuity between the stamp and the terrain. And let's put some over here and some over here like this. There you go. So now it kind of looks like those are roots of the tree. And then we might want to throw down some other trees and we might want to throw down some other textures as well, that green. So we can go ahead and pick a texture. We can choose this light green right here and just apply a little bit, just see what it looks like. There we go. All right, that looks nice. And we can still keep some of that uh, orange or purplish color, kind of a pinkish color. There we go, that looks nice. All right, now we have that. And I also want to maybe throw down some trees as well. Now, I personally really like these kind of purple and pinkish type of trees. They look kind of cool. So we'll just go ahead and place them down. And as always, when you're placing little stamps like trees, do overlap. Overlap the base of your terrain so that it looks like it sticks out. Throw some overlapping the water right here as well. Throw some right here. Maybe even overlapping some of the world tree itself, there we go. And then of course, maybe some behind. And if it's not at the right layer, just go down one layer, there you go. So it looks like there's a tree behind the landscape and that's gonna create an, uh, an extra sense of depth because that is the trick to depth, is a lot of layering. So let's go ahead and keep placing down trees and making sure that they're a layer below the trees, below that world tree there, perfect. One here and here, yeah, that looks good, there you go. I'm strategically placing them all around. And of course, if you want, you can throw down uh, some texture underneath the trees as well. And let's go ahead and just use that purple color or that kind of pinkish color and just put that just at the base. And what you need to do is just do little dots, click with your brush, 
underneath the trees like that. And we'll add way more to it in the more advanced section of the stream. So that's it. So you start with your terraforming, making sure that the landscape is, the terrain is kind of what you want. Add on the terrain stamps, cliffs, mountains, hills, whatever it might be. Then throw on your centerpiece, whatever that might be, a tree. It could be a large mountain with a tower on top of it. It could be whatever. There's a lot of different options on what that centerpiece might be. The centerpiece is there is to kind of show like, hey, what kind of biome is this? It's very clearly kind of a fey. It has purplish trees. It has a massive tree. That way you're kind of sticking with a theme. And that way it all kind of comes together. Now, if you feel like you're not happy with just out stock, out of the hat, just throwing everything down, you want to mess with things more, you totally can. That's what those advanced settings are for. If you select that tree, let's start with the centerpiece first. If I select that centerpiece, that tree, and then you're going to see some advanced settings. <clears throat> you're going to go ahead and just click advanced settings, open it up. You're going to see there's color adjustments and a transform. I'm going to do a little bit of both. I'm going to transform the tree to make it look a little bit bigger and a little bit wider up. There we go. Make it a little bit bigger. And I'm also going to change the hue. Maybe I want it to be purple to match with the purple trees. So I change that color up a little bit. Maybe I want to change up some of those, uh, some of that terrain as well. If you select one, go select all from this set and change the hue. You can change the hue to different colors as well to make it more purple. And as you can see, it's coming together more and more kind of matching. And then I can do the same thing with a texture. I can change um, the advanced settings and make it the color that I want. You go to color, change the hue, and I can change it to whatever color I want it to be, more purple. And I'll just go ahead and do it again. We'll apply that purple texture that I just created and just place that down. There we go. And now you kind of have this nice fey kind of biome to it. And of course, if you're not, if you don't like that scale, you can just select the whole thing, group it, and then just scale it down or scale it up. It's up to you because it's perfectly scalable. If I create group and just name it Fay, everything in that is there. I go to create and then all I have to do is just select it, hold down that shift key and you can use your mouse scroll wheel to scale it up and down. That's the kind of beauty of it is you can scale those groups to make sure the trees are the right size to make sure that you're staying within the scale of your other biomes. And that way you're not going to have this scale discrepancy where one biome is huge and other biome stamps are absolutely tiny. So you can group the whole thing, scale it down, and then in terraform as necessary to match around the stamps. Okay. All right. So those are kind of the tricks that I kind of use. I put down the basic stuff and then I'll go into the advanced settings and start changing things up. In fact, I might want to even do more to the biome too. I don't, maybe I don't like these, uh, build these terrain stamps right here are all kind of facing straight up. Maybe I want to rotate them a little bit, select them, select that yellow circle and just kind of rotate them to face in different directions so that that way it kind of has a more natural feel to it. So it's just perfectly straight up. It has a nice feel to it. Maybe I want to throw down a little extra more. I've got this kind of spinning clouds around the tree. Maybe it wouldn't hurt to add maybe one of these um, spinning whirlpools right here and just put that on top of that. Maybe there's a portal that leads to a, a different part. Maybe this is the entrance to the Fey, to the Fey Wild or Fey. And of course, if I place a stamp down, I want to now play with the advanced settings of it. So usually with a stamp like this, you see how bright blue that is. I'll completely saturate the stamp to full saturation up to 200. And that way, when I change the hue, I have a good feeling for the color when I'm changing the hue. Because if I turn that off, you'll kind of notice that it's not quite as colorful. It's harder to tell what color it is. So saturating it all the way up first to 200. And then playing on the slider bar allows you to kind of play around a little bit with the color more. So I don't really like that blue. I'll maybe go with kind of a, maybe a pur more purplish color. And that way it looks like there's kind of a portal coming out from on top of the tree. So you've got this nice fey feel to it. And then you can do all kinds of fun stuff to it. But there's your fey. So now we want to move on to maybe the next one. Again, we're going to start with some simple stuff. We're not going to do anything crazy. Let's just start with our terraforming. We'll go 
to our mask tool, the add mode of the mask tool. We're going to use that edgy brush. Make sure again it's set the right thing here. And what we're going to do here now is I'm going to I, what I want to do is I want to, again, make the terrain look like it fits the theme. So what I might do is maybe create some spikes to kind of show like the inhospitability, you know, kind of a hostile terrain. By creating these spikes, it gives it a kind of a inhospitable feel to it. And that way it'll look kind of scary. Let's go ahead and throw in some spikes here, some a spike here. When you throw in these spikes, you kind of create a nice inhospitable feel to it. So let's go ahead and just continue doing my terraforming. Make them a little bit bigger. Maybe throw in a little hook right here, a horn. There we go. That looks nice. There we go. Now we have this kind of scary looking kind of island. And I might want to choose a texture that I want to apply. And again, I'm not going to do any HS or not any color adjustments. I'm just going to use this stock texture and we can maybe do some adjustments to it later. And maybe even some of the islands that are next to it. So that way there's kind of a transition between this evil biome and this other biome right here. There we go. So now you have some transition between the biomes. And then we can throw down some terrain. Of course, we'll start with terrain first. And I'm going to be using, again, those clipping mask mountains. They're absolutely perfect because they capture the texture on the FG layer. That's anything made with the add mode of the mask tool. And I'm just going to position them correctly in a way to where they're not bleeding off of the island. Kind of notice that this stamp right here is bleeding off the island. When you place the stamps, make sure that they're not bleeding off of the island and they're on the actual add mode of the mask tool. Okay, and I'm going to go and scale them up and down as necessary to fit in certain areas. Now, I don't want it to be look like just your ordinary mountain. I want it to look more evil. What's really cool is, is that you can actually stack other clipping mask stamps on top of these mountains to kind of give them a different feel to it. So what I'll end up doing then is using kind of the same kind of karst like stamps that I used before and then I'm gonna make sure they're a layer above and this is gonna give this a nice spiky kind of feel to the mountains so on top of the peaks of the mountains I'll add this stamp on top of it and that way it's got this extra kind of sharp jagged peaks to it giving it a nice kind of jagged feel to it and I'll go ahead and just also rotate these a little bit so that that way they're not perfectly straight and that's going to give it a nice feel to it. So you can stack terrain stamps on top of each other to give it a little more extra to it. Instead of just throwing down one mountain, throw down mountains and maybe some karsts on top of that. The trick is just, again, to line up that line work so that that way it doesn't look like it's out of place. So if I take this and put it down, bring it down a little bit, and I'm going to rotate it again. And again, you notice how these spikes this kind of jagged landscape is overlapping the ocean behind it that looks great it gives it an extra sense of depth and that's what you want okay all right let's throw down another one let's do a different one not the same one now once you've thrown down your terrain then you can kind of move on to that next step which is putting either um, some points of interest on the map so I might decide that maybe I want to put like an evil fortress. It could be a crater. It could be whatever. There's a lot of different options. You can place it in there. You could use an icon or a symbol, maybe a creature. Whatever you decide, it's really up to you. And so I'm going to go ahead and make the centerpiece, which is maybe some evil fortress. And I'm going to just nestle it in right here in these mountains right here. I'm going to make sure that it's a layer above. Let's just nestle it right in between these mountains here. And then take those same karst that you used and put it another layer above and what we're going to do is we're going to create some transition between um, the base of that fortress and the landscape underneath and this is really a nice trick because what it does is it kind of hides some of the line work beneath and that way it kind of blends in more with the landscape so it kind of looks nice when you when you do that let's go and throw in one more we'll put that right here there we go 
Now it kind of looks like that fortress blends in a little bit more with the landscape. Now from there, I might want to do some other changes. I think this overall looks good. We could throw in some dead trees if you wanted. Since the antithesis of, of the evil is Fae, which is the good, you might want to maybe consider throwing down some dead trees. That might look nice. So I'll go ahead and put them on the right layer. And I'm just going to place them here on the map. Again, do not forget to kind of overlap a little bit. And we'll do some changes to the color adjustments to these so that that way they kind of fit in more. Let's go ahead and place them again in front of the mountains, behind the mountains, in front of the your evil fortress or whatever it might be, overlapping the ocean. Maybe put them on the surrounding islands as well. Put a couple in there in groups. Maybe create another one right here. Put some over here. Again, always at the base of stamps. So if they pop out, there we go, all right. Let's also throw down a crater as well. Put that down right there. I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down so that it's below. And what we are gonna do is we are going to now do um, some more advanced stuff to it. So I can start with trying to mess with the transform of this crater right here and so i'll make it a little bit have a little bit more a little bit taller and i'm going to change the blend mode so now we're going to some advanced stuff and i'm going to change the brightness and that way it keeps the same texture of that dark texture beneath while also creating that creator that crater i'm also going to select all those trees and what i want to do is create uh, this illusion that they are old dead trees sapped of all their color from the sun. They're called ghost stags. And I'm going to select every single one in the set. And then I'm going to change the saturation. And then I'm going to bring the brightness up. And they're going to have this white kind of eerie kind of feel to it. And we'll change it up to a little bit whiter. We're going to change that contrast down. There we go. To make sure they're nice and white. And it's going to have this dead tree feel to it. So they're ghost snags throw that down and then I'm also going to throw on some extra stuff as well I might want to throw in uh, um, another advanced tool that you can use as the path tool and I'm going to go ahead and place a path on the canvas and then I'm going to select a color for the path I'm going to go with kind of a maybe a reddish color and I'm going to use a yellow well, let's actually maybe do the well we'll start with that first and then i'm going to go ahead and change the blend mode and what i want to do is i want to make it look like there's maybe a red boiling pit inside of this or whatever not entirely sure yet it could be any color you want it to be really it doesn't have to be red it could be green it could be white it could be black whatever it is now that i've selected the blend mode i can go now and take my mouse and just kind of fill in the pit like this. So a nice, a little advanced technique you can use is using the path tool for some extra things you might not normally think to use it for. You know, most of the time people use them for roads and there's nothing wrong with using them. That's what they were intended for. But you know what? Expand your mind a little bit, have some fun, do some more advanced techniques up your game. <clears throat> And that will really help you out. So now I've set that, I have that nice little thing right there. Now I can go in and add in maybe some last parts. Maybe I wanna throw in this demon creature and I wanna have it floating above the pit. And I'm gonna, it seems kinda of dull. So what I'll do is I'll just saturate it all the way up, boost that brightness. And I'm just gonna have that hanging out or just hovering right over the pit. Let's go ahead and take a step back and just see what we've created here. So you've got your evil island here with some jagged inhospitable landscape. The path tool that we've used to create this red pit, maybe it's blood of this floating demon head. Who knows, right? We've got an evil fortress. Maybe this is the minions of that evil force, that evil power. If we go up, we started with the Fey and we just took 
the basic stamps. We didn't do any advanced techniques. We didn't use the advanced settings, anything like that. And then we put everything down. And then once everything was put into place, we went ahead and made the adjustments to all the stamps to fine tune them to where we want them. Because anyone who's familiar with this channel, of course, I just like to get carried away. I can't just stop with the stock art. I got to go in with the adjustments and change things up. And once you figured out how to do that, once you've figured out how to play with the advanced settings and stuff, it's really going to up your game. You're going to get more clients. It's really going to boost the look of your maps. And it's going to be able to allow you to fine tune certain areas and fine tune the parts of your map to make it more realistic or whatever you're looking for in your map. Okay. All right. So that is it. Thank you so much, everyone. Next week, we are doing, a, we're going to continue on with the Secrets of the Citadel Ruins. We're going to be using the battle maps and I'm going to be showcasing some cool features in that stream as well. And don't forget, Friday, this week, 3 p.m. PST, we're doing a little special stream for everybody, and I'm excited about that. We're going to be making jungle stuff, so hey, cool stuff. Thank you so everyone for watching. I had a great time making this stuff with you. Don't forget to join our Discord because, hey, we got incredible mentors there. Just please don't overburden them. They, no one wants to walk someone hand through an entire step process. That's what the videos are for. Go to the channel, subscribe, watch our videos, and that way you can just ask for some hints here and there for our mentors. Give them a little bit of a reprieve. All right. Thank you, everyone. Please stay safe and healthy. Merry map making, and I will see you all this Friday for the Jungle Stream. Avita Zane.